It's almost time for opening day, so let's reveal the all sleeper team for 2023 fantasy baseball. Let's start out behind the plate and look at catcher Gabriel Moreno, now with the Arizona Diamondbacks. While fantasy drafters are all over Alejandro Kirk in Toronto, and they should be, I am too, Gabriel Moreno is that sleeper version, kind of a light version you can get later in the draft. He's somebody who can hit for average. It might be right up there with Kirk in terms of somebody who could actually hit at or above 300 at the catcher position. Now, he doesn't have as much pop, probably won't hit too much power. Double-digit home runs might be his ceiling, at least this season, but the average will be there, and playing time is kind of guaranteed now at this point. So Arizona did acquire him because they moved Dalton Varsho. It was going to be Moreno and Carson Kelly sharing time in Arizona. Well, Carson Kelly, now fractured forearm, could be out a while, and Moreno will definitely hold down the fort. He is slated to hit ninth, and that could hurt his counting stats, but look, it's catcher. We're talking sleepers. How many catchers are you really going to have hitting at the top of the order? At first base, let's look for a rebound candidate in Dom Smith, now with the Washington Nationals. Back in 2020, it looked like Smith was on the verge of a breakout. In that shortened season, he was one of the better hitters in the majors, honestly. And then the last two seasons, very disappointing. Last year, he didn't even hit a single home run in 152 plate appearances. The Mets definitely want to contend. They're ready to win now. They moved on, and Smith landed in Washington, where he will have ample opportunity to get at bats on an everyday basis. If he can keep that job, he's going to be hitting in the middle of that order. Maybe he can bounce back. This guy is 27 years old, a former top prospect. And he's having a great spring, hitting 302 as of right now and showing some of that potential that he flashed a couple of years ago. At second base, I'm going to go to the Bay and Tyro Estrada from San Francisco. This guy has kind of stayed under the radar despite putting up pretty good numbers for fantasy last year. What I like is that he qualifies at multiple positions right now, second base, shortstop, and outfield. He's currently slated to be the second baseman and hit second in the order for San Fran. We know the Giants like to move pieces around, have a lot of guys who platoon and split time in places, but they are hurting and they need Estrada right now to play every single day. So he should rack up plate appearances, which is definitely good for your counting stats. Speaking of counting stats, last year he went for 14 home runs and 21 stolen bases. If he continues to be at the top of that order every day, you can imagine he could do even better than that. And this is a guy who's basically being taken as a utility player at third base. I'm going to talk about Jose Miranda one more time. Somebody I've been big on. I think could have a breakout season this year. Was really solid last year in 444 at-bats for the Twins. Went for 15 home runs and 66 RBIs. Should be holding down an everyday job at third base this year. I'll say it one more time. Third base is crazy thin this year in fantasy. And so wait on the position and get some surprisingly solid production from a player who's going under the radar. At shortstop, how about Vaughn Grissom? What? Didn't he just get sent down to the minors? Yes, he did. He will not be on the Braves roster to start the season, but it is only temporary. We know how these things go with prospects. It's a service time manipulation game. So Grissom will start at the season in the minors, but it won't be too long until he's brought back up. Orlando Arcia is serviceable, meaning okay at best. But you know Grissom is a superior talent, especially on offense. The Braves will use him. They'll need his bat. And this is a guy who flashed both power and speed last year in limited time. Braves have shown they're not afraid to give their prospects a chance to earn everyday playing time. Look what happened with Michael Harris last year. Grissom is somebody I think is still worth stashing, especially if your league does have NA spots where you can put a guy who's in the minors, draft him or pick him up, stash him now, and you'll be glad a month from now. And now let's get to the outfield. The Yankees are never short of prospects. Well, one guy who hasn't really gotten as much hype as the others, Oswaldo Cabrera, he has made the opening day roster. So we know we'll get to see him in action. And why not? He's had a great spring. He's gone for four home runs and 13 RBIs so far. Among the league leaders in hits this spring training season, it looks like he'll force his way into the lineup on a semi-regular basis at least. Got a good amount of power to his game, and he's a switch hitter. You don't have to worry too much about him sitting against lefties or righties. If he hits well, he'll stick. In center field, look at the guy who's going to hold down center for Tampa Bay, and that is Jose Siri, formerly prospect for the Astros. Not just on the roster, but Kevin Cash has announced that he's going to be the starting center fielder. Now, he'll probably hit lower in the lineup, 
but it's okay because he'll be out there on a regular basis. And this is a guy who has that combination, I keep looking for, of both power and speed. Could be one of those surprises in the stolen base leaderboard by the time the season's over. Tampa Bay never afraid to give the green light to its hitters. They were 7th in stolen base attempts per game last year, 5th the year before. Siri does strike out way too much, and you have to worry about the batting average. It could be a liability if things go wrong, but this is a player who has an overall pretty balanced profile and now has a chance to prove what he can do. Now for the third outfield spot, I kind of want to cheat here and just put Reds outfielder, insert name, because there's three guys here who all will get a chance to play now with the Reds' various injuries and trades they've made. Jake Fraley, you have TJ Friedel, and you have Will Benson. All of them basically are draft sleepers. The guy I'm actually looking at the hardest is Benson. Wasn't guaranteed to make the roster. Well, it looks like he will do that, but also could wind up being the starting center fielder in Cincinnati. It's surprising that Cleveland gave up on him so quick, only 24 years old. This guy who's a former first round pick, he's 6'5", he's got that speed power combo. And while he didn't impress too much in his limited time with the Guardians, he's doing it this spring. He's had a hot bat and he's stolen several bases already, flashing that speed that you know you want on your fantasy team. I actually feel a little bit better about Friedel in terms of getting you both home runs and stolen bases a few here and there and maybe accumulating more at bats throughout the year but Benson I mean if things break right for him he could be among the league leaders in stolen bases and get you a good average so I think he's just got a little bit higher of a ceiling and then at DH I did have Derek Hall who was set to be while Bryce Harper's on the shelf the regular DH for Philadelphia well now it looks like he's inheriting the first base job because of that unfortunate injury to Reese Hoskins that ended his season. Hall may have DH only eligibility in some fantasy leagues, but again, depending on the rules and the settings of your platform, it won't be too long before you can slot him in at first base, and that's a huge help. Remember, Hall made an instant splash last year, went deep several times, and was a hot pickup. Kind of surprising that after a little while, Phillies just sent him back down and didn't see any need for him. Well, part of the reason is not exactly the best plate discipline, 31% strikeout rate, three and a half percent walk rate. So it was kind of homer or bust for him. That's kind of how Philly's lineup is anyways, isn't it? I mean, Castellanos, Schwarber, Hoskins, guys like that. Hall kind of fits right in. Well, now he'll get extensive at bats and will do so for a Philadelphia team that needs him to drive in runs. So we know that there's some risk that the average might hurt, but the power production, the potential is there. I really like Hall as a late round pick. Don't sleep on those players or this year's breakout hitters.